Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can set up animated level transitions inside of Unity 2022. So on the visual side of things, all that you saw right there was an animation playing on the canvas of the game, stretched to the size of the canvas. So the canvas is going to cover everything you see on the screen, and if you have a component on the canvas, you can hold Control alt down when you're setting the anchor presets on the Rect Transform, and you can just have it stretch the width to the extent of the canvas and the height to the extent of the canvas. That way, even when you have a small animation like this, 160 by 90 pixels, it'll just stretch to be the size of the screen. So what's important here is that you're keeping the same ratio. So I'm doing 16 by 9 for the ratio. And then the size just needs to be some increment for that. In the game window, you can see I'm running the scene at 720p, 1280 by 720. So that is just 16 by 9 ratio. So that's why when I stretch it like this, it works just fine. So the animation itself was just a bunch of lines I sequentially added inside of Asprite. So any animation tool where you can export multiple frames from are going to work here. So you can see the second frame, third frame, fourth frame, and then I start adding bigger frames. This is just something kind of random I made up in a couple minutes. So a 15 frame animation and it ends with complete black, which allows us to completely mask out the first scene which would be a good spot to actually load in the second scene, which we'll do in a couple minutes here. So before we get to that, you can see that the level transition script I have is waiting for a object with the tag player, that's this guy here, of course, to walk on to a certain region defined by our box collider. So a standard is trigger box collider. If I hit uh, edit there and go back to scene view, you can see this is the region where we would start triggering the scene transition. It's going to eventually load the market outside scene. So this is looking for a scene asset. And then the animation itself is a game object, which we are instantiating onto the canvas in the scene. So it's going to require a canvas in your scene. Most scenes would have one. Most scenes would have one anyway, because that's where your UI and everything goes, but make sure it's there. So let's go ahead and talk about the script here really quick. When we start the script, I'm finding the canvas object in the scene. So find object of type is going to go through the scene hierarchy. That's down here and find the first object, which has a canvas component in it. So you could theoretically have multiple canvases in your scene. I never intend to. So this is an OK way to do it, just to simply find the canvas without having to reference it directly. Uh, alternatively, you could make it a public game object and drag and drop the exact canvas you want to reference in the scene, but you'd have to do that for each time you use this script. So next we come down here to on trigger enter 2D. So just to stand whenever an object walks into the box collider, it's going to give us the colliding object that walked into the trigger zone. In this case, we're checking to see if it is matching the tag, which is player tag. So we only want player game objects to trigger the level to switch. Makes sense. You wouldn't want a random enemy to change the level for the player. Then I have a interface which defines characters that can be damaged. And if this player is a damageable character in the game, then I am going to set its invincible property to true so that it can't be damaged while making that scene transition. So before I talk about the next little bit, let's just go ahead and show what happens here. So regardless of how I enter this little area, it's going to move the player towards a center point, the position of the level transition. And it's going to actually take control of it and make it walk towards there. So in this game, the player is in a dynamic rigid body type by default. So all the movement relies on it being in dynamic mode. And in order to disable that typical movement to be able to receive add forces from knockbacks and enemies and all of that, I'm just changing the type to kinematic, which means that the player movement is only going to be defined by what we set up in the script. So it's one way to essentially disable it and then give it a new behavior. And in this case, the new behavior is that we're going to give it a direction to walk towards and we're going to set its velocity to be that direction times the enter speed, however fast we want it to approach it, which is defined up here at the top of the script with this enter speed variable. So we're disabling the normal movement. The user import doesn't matter anymore. And the character is just going to walk towards that center area. In this case, that's going to be exiting uh, the store, entering the store, whatever other kind of door or cavern entrance you want it to enter. And while that's happening, we also instantiate our animation onto the scene. So that's when you get this to appear. And once this is done playing, we're going to load the new scene. So we instantiate a new copy of the animation, 
there's only one animation in that object, so it's going to immediately play and we get reference to the animator on that new game object. So when we have the animator reference valid, basically the animation has been created. We just wait for its normalized time to be greater or equal to one, one representing that the animation has finished. So basically breaking the animation down into a percentage out of one value. So once it hits one, it should be done. And then we can load the new scene with the scene manager load scene function. So if you want to skip all the animation stuff, all you really need to do to switch scenes is to do scene manager load scene. You don't need to reference a specific object. I think this is just a singleton or something along those lines. And you just load the scene with the scene you're trying to load. And if you want it to be the only scene that's currently active, you want to put it in load scene mode single. You can have additive if you want to have multiple scenes loaded, but uh, I can't imagine many cases where you'd want that unless you're trying to build your level piece by piece and have everything loaded at the same time. But I think single is going to generally be what you want. So we get the scene name from the scene to load. This is a scene asset. So whenever you save a scene to Unity assets, as you'll see here in scenes, each of these are scene assets. So I can double click a level and load it up. And you can see this different scenes. So whatever we are loading here is going to be that new scene to load. So if I go ahead and hit play here and we walk out, the animation plays when the animation is done. We load this scene. The player is just spawning in the default location at the moment, but we can immediately start walking around and interacting in the scene. Now, right here, you can see that this level scene transition has not had a animation set. So we're getting errors. But you can see how it totally takes control of the movement and I can walk through walls and all of that. So you do have to be careful with kinematic mode movement. So if I do mark it outside here and then we go ahead and find the level transition. Right now I'm making it a child of the door so that its position is just going to move with the door. We can see we don't have a fade animation here. So I am going to look for the animation game object in my assets. So I have level exit transition animation, and this is going to be loading the inside. So if I hit play, we can walk in here, transition to this level, and we can walk out and leave the building to go to the outside area. So if I take a look at the prefab for the entry animation, we could easily just change this by having different animations and picking the animation we want to play. Uh, you could also create a animation override controller for a new prefab and just create one new object for each animation uh, that you may want to use across your game and then use these different prefabs for each of the levels you're transitioning to. Another option if you just want to reuse the same animation but as a reverse would be to play it with the speed set to negative one. So let's say that whenever we load this scene, we also want it to play a enter animation. So I will just use this level exit transition animation and put it on the canvas. Now I do want to rename the object. I'll just call it level transition animation here because we're making it more generic because it could be an enter or an exit depending on the speed that we set in the animator. I rename this instance of the prefab level enter animation. And now let's take a look at the animator window. So there's one animation in here and you can see that the speed can have a multiplier set to it. So if I make a new parameter here, I can just multiply the base speed by the multiplier. So let's add a parameter in here. I'll make it a float and let's call it animation speed. Let's just call it animation speed and this will default to one and we want to multiply the speed by this animation speeds. So now that we have this animation speed multiplier, we could set this up to change the animation speed parameter on the animator in a script. So a script like that could be pretty simple where we have a parameter name. In this case, it needs to match animation speed, animation speed, and the override speed that we want to change it to whenever this object boots up and the script starts. So that would just look something like this where we find the animator and then we set the float parameter the name and the value, which defaults to negative one. We could do that, but I think a better way might actually just be to simply create a new animation controller that just has this playing at negative one speed. So what I'm going to do is just remove this component, go to the project area where I have these animations, and I'm going to right click, create a new animation controller. I will call this animation level entry 
animation or level enter animation. I will set it for the controller here. I'll drag this into the folder to create a new prefab. So let's choose prefab variant here. So based on the original prefab, but has its own settings. Namely using a different level enter animation here rather than the level transition animation. Also, uh, I'm going to rename that. So I will call this level exit animation. So now what we need to do is go into the prefab for this object, open up the animator window. I will move this up here next to game tab, and I'm just going to drag the animation, the animation level transition into here, set the speed to negative one so that it plays in reverse. And that should basically be everything we need for this level enter animation. So if I have this set on the canvas, then this is just going to automatically play when the level loads. So if I hit play here, you can see that it does get stuck on the first frame here. So there's two ways I could fix that. One would be to have it destroy itself when the animation is completely done. Another option would be to just add an extra frame to the animation. So if I went over here and just had frame one be no image sprite, then that would also work. So I'll just do the easier way and move this forward one extra frame. And then at this one, I'm going to set that image sprite property to be nothing. So if I click here, let's go to the inspector. I'll take the source image, set it to nothing. So if I hit play, the animation enter mostly works, but it stops at this first frame. So we need some way of removing this sprite from the canvas. One would be to disable this animation object uh, as soon as it reaches this point. Another would be we could put an extra frame into the animation where it just has nothing so that it will show invisibly. Or we could destroy the game object itself when the animation is complete. So probably the most straightforward way to handle this is to move everything one frame over. And then at this first frame, we can keyframe the level enter animation to be completely invisible. So we'll take the color here and I'll take the alpha and I'll set that to zero, which will make it invisible. We just need to have this reflected in the animation window. So I'll do add image color. And in here, we'll just take the alpha set to one We'll make this set to zero at the first frame. And at the second frame, we'll keyframe this as one. So now if we hit play, you'll see it sort of works. We also need to make sure at the end that the alpha is one here as well. If we hit play, then you'll be able to see that we have that extra frame at the start, which remember it's going in reverse. So once it hits the start, it's going to be completely invisible because the alpha is zero. So I let go of play, I hit play, and you can see that it is invisible on the screen. Now it's technically still there, so you might ultimately decide that a better way would be to add an animation event in a script, which just tells it to disable itself, the game object. You can uh, make game object enabled equals to false, or make it uninteractable, turn off raycast target, whatever you need it to do. Uh, but this is the straightforward way that requires no scripting whatsoever. So if we hit play, you can see we have the enter animation. The character is able to move before the scene's fully loaded, and we can load the new scene. Now this scene doesn't have a enter animation, so you can customize that. You can have the same animation or a different one, or none at all, and you can leave that scene. But when we leave the inner scene and load the outer scene, you can see it just plays the animation forwards and then in reverse. So it makes a smoother scene transition. So if we want to add the same level enter animation to the inner scene so mark it inside uh, let's save this scene load the new one and then i have my animated level enter animation i will just drag that onto the canvas here if i hit play then you can see we have the loading level and we also have the leaving level animation so loading the new level leaving the level and loading the new level over and over again now if you use the same animation for literally everything that could get boring so i recommend uh, booting up whatever program you want and you could just create a bunch of different frames of animation and make it do whatever you want Maybe you have zigzag patterns Maybe you do a box that goes around the outside and then eventually ends in the inside Or maybe you have stripes that go down vertically Initially and then expand to cover the rest of the image. It's it's really totally up to you 
Uh, just make sure that when you put the animations onto the canvas that it actually stretches to fit the full size of the screen. Because this source image is 160, 90 pixels, and the canvas is currently 1280 by 720. So having this stretching of the left-right horizontal and the top-down vertical is one easy way to do that. 